hysterectomy is essentially taking out the uterus, uh, the womb. Uh, you can take out the ovaries as well. You can take out the cervix or not take out the cervix, or we can conserve the ovaries or we can uh, conserve the cervix. We've got all those options. Usually we take the tubes out if we take uh, out the, the womb, the uterus, because there's some evidence that cancer of the ovaries starts in the tubes. And if we're taking out the womb, the, the tubes really have got no function. So it, it seems best to remove those. Obviously, um, how we remove the, the, the womb, the uterus, is then becomes important. Uh, historically, uh, we've tended to do open procedures or vaginal procedures, and both those procedures, uh, or every operation depends on access. How do you get things? That's access to your vision and access to the instruments that you're going to use. And in an open operation or vaginal operation, you're essentially using hands and eyes, whereas in a laparoscopic operation, you're using very fine instruments um, between five and ten millimetres, uh, and, and optics, um, uh, which basically is uh, a, a scope which actually magnifies the image that we're seeing so we can actually see structures far more clearly uh, than we can with just the naked eye. And obviously we can get a lot closer than we can with our naked eye as well. So from the patient's point of view, it tends to mean smaller scars. It tends to mean that we can handle the tissue um, more uh, gently and that tends to translate to less pain and uh, swift recovery from the surgery side of things. So in some cases, we can even think about uh, our, our women going home on the same day or usually the next day following surgery. Uh, for, me, for me, it's chalk and cheese that uh, basically the traditional operation requires quite a large incision. Um, even in uh, people are being conservative, it'd be uh, 10 centimetres, 12 centimetres, 15 centimetres cut on uh, a, a woman's abdomen, often uh, transversely in the, in the bikini line, uh, but sometimes can be up and down. So from the tummy button all the way down to uh, the, the hair line in, in, in the pubic area. Whereas laparoscopic surgery, we have a small incision actually inside the t uh, tummy button. So people actually often can't see that scar. We have two little scars towards the side, which are about five millimetres. And again, um, it's very hard to say that people have had an operation because of those five millimetre scars. And then in the bikini line, we've usually got to spend another 10 millimetre incision, which again is hidden in, in the, uh, the hair, hair line there. So it, it, from the woman's point of view, cosmetically, it makes, uh, I think, a, a huge difference from the recovery side of things because we haven't disrupted the abdominal wall. Uh, to any great extent. Uh, obviously, it feels a bit sore, it feels a bit bruised, but those muscles haven't been moved apart to actually allow us to get into the tummy. And those tummy muscles are important for everything, from coughing, breathing, uh, sitting up. And so uh, really people can tend to get on with life a lot swifter uh, following um, a laparoscopic surgery and recover faster uh, because of that. Um, in terms of my point of view, uh, I can use very fine instruments and I have a magnified image. And if I go back to the early days when I started operating, some important structures you'd be trying to feel with your fingers, whereas with laparoscopic surgery, you can see them very clearly and move them out of the way. Every structure is a risk, but, but yeah, I think the, the risks uh, are reduced by what we can see. Uh, what we can't see, we can't save, uh, well, we can't protect, but obviously vision is, is, is vitally important. Uh, the, the main risks are, are, are as with any operation, um, there's the risk of anaesthetic, although anaesthetics nowadays are extremely safe uh, procedures. Um, then we have all the other tissues which are inside the abdomen, the bowels in there, the blood vessels are in there, the ureters, which are the tubes and the kidneys, the, the bladder are in there, uh, the bladder itself is in there, and the bowel towards the back passages in there. So all of those structures are at risk. But... Um, the important thing is what we can see. And with laparoscopic surgery, we can visualize a lot of these structures a lot better. And therefore, uh, I th from a personal point of view, I think it's a much safer procedure in terms of if we can see things, we can move things away and save them. But there are risks and risks do relate to sometimes the complexity of the uh, initial condition or disease that a woman has, which is the indication for the hysterectomy. Or indeed, if a woman has other um, risk factors, um, uh, or, or other um, diseases which they have before they have the surgery, obviously that's going to increase the risk from the anaesthetic point of view. 
or and previous surgery obviously complicates that but that doesn't change with an abdominal procedure uh, that that uh, probably is magnified when an abdominal procedure reduced by the laparoscopic side We actually produced an article at one of the World Congresses on this, and basically saying that um, abdominal hysterectomy is a procedure that probably should be uh, consigned to the annals of history. Uh, slightly flippant, because I think you can never say never in medicine, but virtually, if there's an indication for a woman to have a hysterectomy, uh, almost without exception, there's always exceptions in medicine, but almost without exception, that procedure can be performed laparoscopically. Um, we, in our own hands, in our own unit, found that uh, by using a combination of methods, our abdominal hysterectomy rates went down to 1%, um, which uh, in many centres, it can be the converse. And 80 to 90% can be abdominal procedures. We were down to 1% abdominal procedures. But the norm is probably around 55% of procedures are still done abdominally. So um, there's a long way to go for a lot of women. And that choice should be given to women to actually decide what they want, as opposed to the choice coming from the surgeon. The same applies to any type of hysterectomy. So the outcomes of the hysterectomy depend very much on why a woman is having a hysterectomy or, or the, um, the comorbidities or diseases that a woman has in any case. And I would argue that um, in laparoscopic hands, that uh, the, you reduce the risks uh, by visualisation. Um, but patient factors, if they have other issues like heart disease or chest disease, if they're very overweight, that is going to make a procedure more complex. But if you compare an open operation, um, especially if, if a woman has a little bit more tummy, then um, it's a longer way in. And um, therefore, sometimes we need bigger, bigger holes if we're doing an open operation. Whereas with laparoscopic operations, we still use the same size of holes and actually go through that tissue to actually access the abdominal cavity. So that that helps. Um, but what has happened over the last 30 years is that we really only perform hysterectomies uh, in women who have got complex conditions because we do try to treat as many women as possible medically and, and not to perform operations unless uh, it really is um, essential and the right thing to do. There are, there are other good medical treatments that we can use or less invasive treatments that can sometimes we can use, uh, which avoids uh, hysterectomy in itself. Although it's extremely important to listen to, to a woman and the actual symptoms she's had to make sure that if we do choose something which is short of hysterectomy, that it is likely to succeed. Um, there's a procedure called endometrial ablation, which we use, uh, but it's not unusual for me to see a patient who has suffered from heavy, painful periods prior to having their uh, ablations. And although the periods may become lighter, the pain persists because pain was due to conditions such as adenomyosis which is like endometriosis in the muscle of the womb um, or endometriosis itself and both of these are, are tissue which is like womb tissue but just in the wrong place that when a woman has a cycle it causes the womb to feel bruised or the tissues inside the the abdomen to feel bruised so it's very important that we select uh, and, and help the woman come to that correct decision which is most likely to help her uh, to, to feel better afterwards. On the positive side, hysterectomy is a very well studied uh, condition and we do know that uh, there's something called quality of life indicators and we do know that hysterectomy is extremely effective in improving quality of life scores, which at the end of the day, that's what it's all about.